Some people say go to San Fran for Golden Gate Bridge, Alcatraz, and Lombard Street, which I agree, but I would say go for the food. Are you surprised? First restaurant we went to was Rio Coops, which had an amazing atmosphere and a live DJ. This, I would say, is a must. One tip is to put yourself on the wait list on Yelp before going, because it could take up to 45 minutes to an hour wait on a busy night. There's specials every day, so look out for these on the whiteboard. We got the soft shell crab as the appetizer, which was super creamy and flavorful. The fried outside gave it an amazing crispiness as well. Highly recommend. The rolls were all very good and the trashy was super fresh with very good variety. Worth the steeper price point. Next up, Heist. First off the bat, I wasn't impressed with the wait time. The host quoted 20 minutes, which turned into 50, but we were committed already. This was a small, cute brunch place, which made amazing breakfast burritos. Most people would be full until dinner after that whole burrito. The Heist breakfast plate was also large portions and had great flavors and good variety. All in all, the food was good, but not worth the wait. Lung Feng Bakery is a very small hole in the wall for Chinese pastries near Golden Gate Park. Very fresh egg tarts, curry puffs, and other pastries. Also, it's very inexpensive compared to other restaurants in SF, so if you're looking for a light lunch idea, definitely go. On the contrary to that, if you're looking for fine dining, Fino could be an option for you. This is an Italian restaurant and bar located inside the Andrews Hotel. This is a place where I would recommend making reservations for dinner because it's often full. Honestly, my first impressions for restaurants usually are based off their bread serve. And in San Fran, for some reason, all of the bread are served cold and stuck together. So I wasn't impressed. The spread on the side for Fino though was amazing. I'm definitely gonna butcher this, but we had their ravioli al gamberi, contorno, and fettuccine carbonara which were all very flavorful, creamy, and delicious. But the only thing was that the shishito peppers were a bit too spicy for my palate. And of course, we ended with amazing tiramisu. Next up, Good Mongok Bakery. If you're looking for good service, don't come here. <laughs> but if you're looking for cheap, amazing dim sum takeout with huge portions, this is the spot. We purchased their shrimp dumplings, chive dumplings, and shark fin dumplings, along with siu mai and congee with Chinese donut sticks. I suggest sitting at Portsmouth Square if it's a nice day outside. John's Grill has been open since 1908, and they don't let you forget that they're a historic restaurant. There are many old pictures on the walls, beautiful white linen, and mahogany structures. The clam chowder was probably the best we had on this trip. The halibut and the steak was both well prepared, but also not the most memorable meal compared to others.
ended with creme brulee. Can't say anything bad about dessert. Let's be real. The reason why we came to Kitchen Story was that their pictures on Instagrams looked like food porn. How can I say no to that? I had their sesame soy latte, which was spot on for flavor and aroma. Presentation was obviously beautiful as well. We had their millionaire bacon benedict, which was their chain specialty. To say the least, there was no weight, delicious food, and aesthetic presentation. Yes in my books! If you want to see more of what we ate for the rest of the San Fran trip, along with some stops at San Jose, make sure to follow for next week's video. Give us a like to let us know, and we'll be back next time! Music